October 11th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Psalms chapters 129 and 130 from the Old Testament. Since my youth they have often attacked me, let Israel say. Since my youth they have often attacked me, but they have not defeated me. The plowers plowed my back, they made their furrows long. The Lord is just, he cut the ropes of the wicked. May all who hate Zion be humiliated and turned back. May they be like the grass on the rooftops which withers before one can even pull it up, which cannot fill the reaper's hand or the lap of the one who gathers the grain. Those who pass by will not say, May you experience the Lord's blessing. We pronounce a blessing on you in the name of the Lord. From the deep water I cry out to you, O Lord. O Lord, listen to me, pay attention to my plea for mercy. If you, O Lord, were to keep track of sins, O Lord, who could stand before you? But you are willing to forgive so that you might be honored. I rely on the Lord. I rely on him with my whole being. I wait for his assuring word. I yearn for the Lord more than watchmen do for the morning. Yes, more than watchmen do for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for the Lord exhibits loyal love and is more than willing to deliver. He will deliver Israel from all the consequences of their sins. God, sometimes I wonder about what it was like to live in Old Testament times. I mean, we have tons of information about it. And you know me, I love thinking about how people lived and how people thought back then and with the different social structures uh, that are different than most of the countries that that we live in. But one of the things that I would find interesting, and I have no way of knowing how this feels in my heart, is back in the Old Testament times, there was a sacrifice that took place that reflected a heart change that had to do with your forgiveness of that situation. And it was a process, Um, sometimes a laborious process in the sense that it took a while to go through all the things that were required of them to make a sacrifice for that sin and for that forgiveness to happen. Um, And I, I am obviously thankful on so many levels that we have Uh, the purest sacrifice as New Testament Christians, uh, your son Jesus Christ who died for us. But sometimes I wonder about their mindset, how it was different than our mindset. You know, we go through a similar process where we uh, repent for our sins and you give us forgiveness, but that forgiveness has already uh, happened on the cross Uh, So kind of an interesting dynamic there. But I think about the Old Testament times that it seems like the weight of those sins would be heavier because of the process. They didn't have the ultimate sacrifice, Jesus Christ. They had animals that were put in place of that at that time. I don't know. I guess I I get this feeling sometimes, God, that there would have been a lot of... uh, doubt and fear if true forgiveness had happened back then. I don't know, maybe that's just me looking back through the filter of Jesus dying on the cross for our sins. Uh, they they really, for the most part, didn't have anything to look t- forward to. They couldn't see it through a, a future filter. I don't know, maybe, maybe that's just how I feel in my heart that it would be. But then I go to present day where if Jesus hadn't died on the cross for our sins, none of us could could exist. Your, your anger would just burn us right up. Uh, the Bible even talks about that. Um, but that, that buffer of, of that forgiveness of sins and, and not even remembering and as far as east from the west of our sins uh, is overwhelming to me. It's so pure and consistent and complete beyond anything that we can understand or imagine. And I know sometimes people still uh, struggle with guilt over things that they've done uh, as though they haven't forgiven themselves. 
and I can't speak for them, but I know for me, I've learned that if I'm still holding on to things, uh, that's an arrogance piece because it really has nothing to do with me. It has to do with you and the fact that you have already forgiven me um, for those sins. And if you can forgive me, uh, then I should be able to move on. I've also found that when we take up time dwelling on things we've done, that's time taken away from our short amount of time here on earth of things that you want us to do. That if we are, are feeling guilty, if we're dwelling in sin, I'm not talking about we shouldn't deal with making ourselves better, of course. But if, if we're fussing and whining and, and complaining and uh, wallowing, wallowing is a good word when we're dealing with sin, uh, and hiding, that's another good word. That's all time spent that you would rather have us out there uh, doing things for your kingdom. And instead, we're spending it very selfishly when we have this most amazing gift that the people during the Old Testament times didn't even have. They had a shadow of it. Uh, we have the real thing in your son, Jesus Christ. And yet there's so many times where we take it for granted and make it all about us instead and, and wallow in our sin and our choices. God, allow us, allow me to make better choices. That when I do make poor choices, that that process of forgiveness and moving on is as quick as you need it to be for me to learn what I need to and move on and get back to my life of doing what you've expected me to do here on earth the reason you made me. You didn't make me to sit in my room and hide from my sin or wallow in my sin. You made me to be your child and to go out into the world and tell other people about you and to glorify you. And so any, any time in my life that I'm not doing that, I'm not doing what I was actually created for. So God, I do know that we couldn't, I couldn't even be talking to you right now if you held accounts of everything that I've done wrong in this life. I, I do realize that. And I am truly thankful to you for the forgiveness of those sins, as well as the healing and the education I need to move forward from those and to be a better person here on earth, a better Christian for you. So I can worship and glorify you the best that I possibly can for how you made me. In your son's name I pray. Amen.